Good morning. Uh, welcome back or welcome to Yoga with Kira. Um, lengthening and stretching the back of your leg in the wave. And so the backs of our legs, they are tight because we sit on them so much. We are sitting so much of the day. And I remember somebody explaining that the, um, if you compress something or sit on something a lot, the fibers become, the words that they used was dehydrated. And there's this sense of a uh, yeah, just things being compacted. So hamstrings, backs of your thighs, they are tight, you know? And so even if you're really strong, they're also tight. So they're tight, they're tight. So go slowly with these movements. They're gonna be very deep and we're gonna hold things for a while, okay? So go gently. Um, so lie on your back and we shall begin. Come, come. So land in, arrive, and then draw your right knee up onto your chest and hug it in. And just let your belly settle, your spine land, and bring your awareness to that area at the back of your thigh, the back of your bum. Okay, so this is the, the juicy, fleshy part of the back of your thigh. Nice. And now stretch your right leg up towards the ceiling and notice the sensations in that place again. And you're going to feel more into the calf as well, into the back of the knee. Bend your knee, squeeze your knee towards you, stretch your leg, pull your leg gently down towards you. So you're just going, oh, there's that sensation. Pull your knee towards you. And then draw your leg towards you. So you're mapping the feeling of the back of your leg. One more time, bend your knee and then lengthen. And then hold on wherever your hands naturally just land. You're not reaching them so that your shoulders and your head have to lift. Just let your hands land and then relax your shoulders and just let your arms be heavy. So I'm not pulling, I'm just letting the weight of my hands be on my leg. So I'm just holding and then I'm softening my arms. Point your toes, flex your foot. Mm, point your toes, flex your foot. Notice how this stretch changes as you move your foot. Nice, lower your foot to the floor and just arch your lower back and then flatten your lower back down. And as you do this, feel the difference between your two buttocks. So as I flatten down and my bum squeezes, I can feel that there's a different type of squeezing happening on the right buttock, right thigh. I just feel that. Arching your back, flattening down. One more time. Arching your back, flattening down. Nice, squeeze the left knee up towards you. And just feel into the whole of that left leg, but especially that area at the back of your thigh, the back of your bum, okay? And just notice the sensations. Really deepen your awareness, your proprioception, your interioception, your tracking of that area. Nice. Stretch your leg up towards the ceiling. Pull gently. And you're going to feel loads down the back of your leg. Bend your knee, squeeze your knee towards you. So lengthen your leg, pull, and bend your knee, pull. And all the time you're trying to track, how is the back of my thigh? How is the back of my leg? How does this feel as I move? Lengthening with your leg straight, squeezing down with your knee bent. One more time. Lengthening and bending. Nice, so straighten your leg up and then hold on wherever you hold on. And then I like interlocking my fingers because then I can really relax my arms and just let the weight of my arms, so I'm not pulling my arms, I'm just letting the weight of my arms be, what word would that be? Be weighting down. Yeah, I suppose that's the word. Weigh, weighing down the left leg. Breathe down into that left leg. And pointing your toes, flexing your foot. Pointing your toes. 
Keep your breath moving and really feel the intensity. There's a certain intensity of the back of the legs. So meet this intensity with kindness, with awareness, with presence and with movement. You don't have to stay frozen anywhere with the intensity of what's happening. Nice. Bend your knee, bring your foot to the floor, arch your back, flatten your lower back down. Arch your back, flatten your lower back down. Nice. Bring your right foot to rest on top of the left knee and then pull your left knee up towards you. But you're doing it without your hands. Your hands are resting either on your chest or on the floor beside you. And then just rock from side to side. So we're just make sure to keep that right foot active. The more active your right foot is, the more protected your knee is. Okay, so I'm really flexing my right foot. And actually, I'm really flexing the left foot as well, just because it wanted to join the party. <laughs> just rock. Maybe roll in a circle. And then roll in the other direction. Super. Change legs. Bring your left ankle to rest on top of your right knee. Squeeze your right knee up towards you. Flexing that right foot deeply and your uh, left foot deeply and your right foot can join the party too. Okay. Mm, just rock. And really let your breath deepen down into your belly like you can send your breath into your legs. Really meet the deep of your pelvis with presence and with your breath. Nice. Draw a circle. How do you, I love that idea of owning my legs and the sensations that emerge. Really inhabiting them, embodying. Roll your legs in the other direction. Really creating a sense of connectivity into the power of my legs. <laughs> nice. Both feet to the floor. Pause. Nice. Roll over onto your belly. Bring your elbows underneath your shoulders. And from here, look way down the beach. You're just looking down the beach and trying to spot the ice cream van. <laughs> and then drop your head down and you're looking back towards your chest. Tuck your toes under, keep your knees on the floor, lift your belly. Nice, dropping down. This time, as you look down the beach, squeeze your bum and look down. Wait, I have a sense of gesture and my elbows are pushing down. Tuck your toes, lift your belly. So travel from one to the other. Arching, your toes are lifted. Rounding, your toes are tucked under. And just feel the squeeze of your bum. The lift of your belly. Nice, one more time. Super, come into your cat pose. And bring your right leg out to the side, straight out to the side. So my right foot is flat on the floor. My toes are pointing in the same direction as my fingers. Round your back, arch your back. And as you arch, notice how you meet the back of your thigh very deeply. Round your back. Really let your pelvis move. The pelvis moving is the most important. So as a result, as I arch, I'm gonna bend my elbows. So I have a deep sense of really dropping my weight out of my pelvis. Round your back, arching, perhaps bend your elbows. Round your back, arching, nice, cool. So from here, bring your right elbow back, pull it back into lawnmower, and then glide your right hand underneath your left armpit and look towards the left. Pause. So I'm going to, same idea as before, I'm going to arch my back a little bit more. Really allow the 
rather than keeping my back rounded, I'm just going to really drop my weight more and more into the front of my body. And that increases the sense of lengthening that's happening through the leg, through the pelvis, through my spine. And just breathing in, connecting in, settling in. Nice, coming all the way back up. Change. Uh, left leg straight out to the side. From here, rounding your back. Arching your back. Perhaps you bend your elbows and really feel the, it's like the drop of my belly towards my thigh. The, it's like I'm making a ski slope out of my lower back. I just feel that. Feel what happens into that back of your thigh and the lower back. Nice. Draw your left elbow back, lawn more, and then dive your left hand underneath your right armpit. And again, I'm going to really exaggerate the drawing of my belly towards my thigh, the arching of my back. It just really deepens me into that left leg. Feel your leg. Sink a bit deeper. Nice. Come all the way back up. Push back into your downward dog. All the way back, downward dog. So pulling your heels back towards the floor. Really stretching through your toes. Bend both knees and then straighten both legs. And that idea of arching your back, have your, rather than letting your back round as your legs straighten, try and keep your back arching and lift through your sit bones. And so you have this sense of a certain amount of tone in the rising of the pelvis. You can bend one knee, bend the other knee, and notice how that moves deeper into your calves as a result. And bending both knees, drop them down a little bit more so you're more into crouching, and then straighten your legs. Cool. So drop your knees down and bring your right foot forward between your two hands. Lengthen your back leg and turn your back foot at a 45 degree angle. Hands are either side of that right foot. Bend your knee. Straighten through your leg a little bit. It'll be a small movement. Bend your knee. Straighten a little bit through your leg. So there's just this sense of knee moving forward, knee moving backwards. Maybe keep your toes so they're flat to the floor, uh, more so than foot at a 45 degree angle. Yeah, I feel like I can get more movement out of that. I'm up on my fingertips. Nice, one more time. Great. Step back, pause in your downward dog. Nice. Left foot forward, so drop your knees down, step your left foot forward, lengthen your back leg, keep your toes flat to the floor without turning your heels, so your leg is just straight back. And bend your knee a little bit more, straighten through your leg a little bit. Really deepening into that sense of breath down into your legs. Nice. Step back. Downward dog. Pause. Nice. And drop your knees down. Bring them really wide. Rest into your child's pose. Let your breath deepen. 
Feel the weight of your bum down towards your heels. Feel your breath all the way down into the pelvis. So as you inhale, can you feel the pelvis widening? Your breath into the real deep lower belly. And you sink a little bit deeper. Nice. All the way forward, tuck your toes under, stretch back. And then step your right foot forward again. So whatever way you do, hop, skip, jump your right foot forward. Turn your back to that 45 degree angle. Bring your right hand to your right knee and then rise all the way up to stand. And just pause. Cool. So bend your front knee, bring your elbow to your knee and then touch the floor with your left hand. Nice. Pull your left elbow back and then reach your right hand up towards the ceiling. What was this one called? This one has a name. Slingshot, I think, at the warrior. No, that's not the name. Hmm, I had a name for that. Maybe I'll remember it at some stage today. Touch the left hand to the floor, elbow back into lawnmower, and then rise with your right hand way up towards the ceiling. And I have this sense, elbow down, hand to the floor, that so the left elbow that pulls back, and then as I reach my right arm long, it's like I'm lifting a bow. Oh, is this bow and arrow? Oh, it is, look, we passed through bow and arrow, and then we're aiming even higher. So it's bow and arrow, and my back hand stays in a weirdly in-line place with the front hand. So it's like I've pulled a bow and arrow, and I'm like aiming high. Just find that in your body. One more time, touch the floor, bow and arrow rise pause there rising super strong up through the right arm left elbows pulled back super straighten the front leg bring your right hand to your right thigh slide the right hand down reach the left hand up pause breathing into your belly so remember if it feels too strong then you've gone too deeply. Time is a stress, adds effort. So because we're staying here, you might find that your right buttock is going, hello. <laughs> so pull back a bit and find a place where you can really engage into your legs and widen into your spine and lengthen through your arms. Nice, bend your knee and bring your left elbow to your right knee. And then bring both hands to the floor, step forward, slowly rolling up, reach your arms wide, palms come together. Bending down, bring in your hands to the floor, step the right foot back. Bring your left elbow to your left knee, pull your right elbow back and rise up into bow and arrow, reaching upwards. Nice. Elbow to your thigh, bring your right hand to the floor. Pull your elbow back, rise. Elbow down, touch the floor. I really like this bow and arrow, this sense of, and then I rise. It's like I'm aiming for something with the front hand. And it really fans my rib cage on the left as I do it. Get a sense of that. As your hand rises, the right side is squeezing, 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 and the left side is opening like a fan or like an accordion. Last one. Right hand to the floor. Rise into bow and arrow up towards the ceiling. Nice. 
Nice. Straighten your leg, bring your left hand down, reach your right arm up, glide sideways into triangle. Breathing. Remember, if it's too strong, you've gone too deeply. Engage into your legs. So rather than being, there's this avoidant thing that I can do where I'm feeling intensity and I start to leave my legs as a result. So instead, I'm coming out a bit and then engaging powerfully. And so that's my place. Rather than being so far beyond my boundary that I have to dissociate, I'm going to reduce my range and really inhabit and be present in my body in that place. Nice. Bring your hand to the floor. Come sit on the floor. Just rock your bum from side to side. Just feel that. Feel your sit bones. Feel the deep muscles of the back of your bum. Roll your pelvis in a big circle. I'm really massaging now. We're massaging the back of our bum, the back of the legs, and then roll in the other direction. I really have a sense of yeah, it's like I'm really deeply massaging. Nice. Come lie on the floor. Rock your knees from side to side. Let it be slow, let it be soothing. Find your equilibrium, your sense of center. I love that idea of rather than overextending ourselves, how do we reduce our expectations or our projections and really inhabit and be present in a really powerful way in a smaller sense? This for me is really important. I can tend to overextend and <laughs> dissociate from it. So it's like, how do I, when my yes is a yes and my no is a no, and I'm really clear about that. So for you, how do you? Inhabit more deeply into your legs, in your triangle, and into your life in general. So just let that settle into stillness. What is it like to be here now? Nice. So stay there. You can stretch your legs out long along the floor. You can keep your knees bent. Nice. Um, thanks for joining me. And uh, I'll see you all tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning uh, is the darkness into light. So when I teach the class, I will have walked with a gang of people, swum in the sea. <laughs> I'll probably walk the dogs before that again. <laughs> so um, yeah, tomorrow's going to be a, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, so I'll see you tomorrow at seven here. And those of you I'm going to be seeing on the road tomorrow morning for darkness into light, I'm looking forward to it already. Um, so thanks and uh, have a great day. Uh, enjoy. It's raining here. Full moon tonight. Woohoo! Half past six tonight is the full moon. Um, that question I was asking before, you know, how do I know that it's a full moon? I think it's. I think I'm starting to hear what it's like with the full moon. I'm still not sure, but I think I am. I've kind of been focusing on it for a while. Um, nice, cool, have a great day. Mm -hmm.